President Tinubu says governors are critical to the success of his administration. And Southwest senators consider the other options and withdraw support for Gottsville Akpabu in the 10th National Assembly race. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has said governors are critical to the overall success of his administration and the desire for a Nigeria that works for all. The president made this assertion in a statement while felicitating with the new leadership of the Nigeria Governors Forum and Progressive Governors Forum, respectively. Tinubu urged the new leaders to use their tenor to advance the peace, unity, and socioeconomic development of the country and to join hands with his administration to engender the Renewed Hope Agenda. Joining us to discuss this is Ola Dotun Hassan. He's a legal practitioner. And also joining us is Eugene Abels, who's the Executive Director, Extra Step Initiative. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be our program. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Um, Dr. you obviously were one of the biggest proponents of uh, the um, Tinubu administration. You pushed during the campaigns. In fact, you campaigned on behalf of uh, yeah. the APC. Let's start by looking at the challenge that he's going to face in terms of um, working together with these governors. Um, the likes of Governor Wike, who somewhat leaned um, towards the APC during the presidential election, uh, and he's, he, the person who's taken over from him, Sim Fubara, uh, is one out of the many others who may not necessarily be APC um, reliant or compliant um, in terms of state. Uh, but how easy will it be? Because we've even seen governors who were, uh, you know, from the same political party with the party at the center, and yet gave it a lot of headache. How easy do you think that uh, the Tinubu administration will have with the governors? Well, uh, well, taking it from the president's uh, inaugural speech at the Eagle Square, uh, he sees no party, rather, he sees governance. So I think the level that we are now is a level of uh, total governance uh, predicated on his renewal agenda. And it has, he has really started on a very good note. And I believe he has, uh, he knows what he's doing for him to have uh, critically uh, bring together the governors. <laughs> of all the type six states, it shows that it's equal to the tax. Because for you to really deliver as a president, you need all, all governors to be on the same page with you. They need to see things because all your vision is critical to the people. The people are the center of your vision. So the carriers of those visions, the first major carriers are the, vision, are, are the governors. And we know we have a three tiers of, uh, of government that, that are under our presidential system that gives a uh, residual exclusive and the the uh, uh, concurrent listing of how to do things, but in, in view of a lot of changes in the uh, in the in the statutory um, basic uh, fact of managing the economy in terms of power, now we now have a a, a concurrent um, management of power between the state and the federal and all other critical sectors of the economy are endeared to ensure that the state governors are carried along. The areas I want him to really focus on is to ensure not just the governors. It should go down well to all the several and four local government chairmen because these are the critical uh, 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 food soldiers you really need to deliver critical uh, um, governance to the people because not just the government, because the majority of these governors, I'm sorry to say, they have their own divergent views. It doesn't uh, maybe goes to say that uh, it's a... Um, is a, um, a, a, a electoral student approach. This is a, conf <laughs> a, a confluence system whereby everybody must congregate ideas and cohabit together, irrespective of their political party. We understand the PDP have their governors. They also have their own areas of interest. But needless to say, the president-elect must go directly to host all the several local government chairmen and ensure that they equally carry their counselors along. Because if we can get those ones on the same table, every citizen know their local government chairman more than their governors. Not everybody has access to governors. But we know the governors will be very critical to ensure that the security vote are not just pocketed, to ensure that education policy must become national. They must ensure that 
um, the issue of security must become everybody's business, not just the business of the president. As commander in chief, every governor is chief security officer and they must represent that. I think uh, Ashwa Dibola Ahmed Tunubu uh, is really, really giving us what governance for the first time really needs to be interpreted as government of the people, for the people, and by the people, and that is what democracy represents. And, and I believe he's well experienced, he knows his onions, and where we'll be looking at is that not just the governors, you should look out for selection of uh, ministers in round peg, in round hole, so that okay. these are just things that will fit in to the governors that he's meeting today. Interesting. Um, Eugene, we've, we've gone, many would say that, you know, the campaign and the politicking um, is over. It's time for governance. But then considering how divisive this campaign season and the elections in itself was, and the fact that there are people who are still going to court or the tribunal, um, it's, it's, a, it's easy to have, to make these statements, to put out press statements or talk uh, at a tea party as opposed to uh, actionable plans or actually getting to um, getting across to these people and being able to get through to them. Um, again, I ask, how easy a task is this going to be uh, for government, for President Tinubu? I beg your pardon. Mm. Well, um, I think I'll put your question in line with the earlier question you asked uh, my brother. And um, I'd like to say that um, just like he rightly pointed out, there are three tiers of government. And in those three tiers of government, you have the executive, legislature, and the judiciary at all the three tiers. And that's the essence of federalism to bring um, governance closer to the people. And if you, really, if you need to contest for any position in Nigeria, you, you're required to go to your ward. You don't register in the capital, you go to your ward so that you begin, to, you begin from there to work government what local government, local government, state, state, before you begin to play national politics. Yeah, the essence of it is for purposes of inclusivity. Now, have we been here before? Yes, we have. In 1984, we were here, where our debt ballooned. States were irresponsible in the kind of loans they took and didn't implement them. So they were not commensurate to the nature of the... The amount of money borrowed were not commensurate to the kind of development that took place between 1979 to 1984. The same thing, unlike what had happened in Brazil, where Brazil had translated her debts into development, into building a major industrial architecture. So we have security, which has failed dramatically in the past eight years and, um, and has to be dealt with. Now, by 1999, when the Bassanjo regime came in, if you remember, when they were appointing ministers, they took people from all other parties who had lost the elections in order to drive the government forward. And in the South-South, governors, they now set up the South, for instance, the South-South Governors Forum. The essence of that forum was for peer review so that they would not compete, compete negatively, but they will, they will begin to run projects together. Projects are cut across, maybe like light rail, roads and so on, to enable the nation to complement whatever the federal government was doing on the macro level. Mm. We are at that junction now. We do not have the funding. We are, uh, our revenue levels are low. And um, just like my brother pointed out, we need to begin to mind, like I've always said on, on this station, we need to begin to call government to begin to function. And the government is basically 90% civil servants. Some are in uniforms, some are in plain clothes, some are in judges' robes, meaning that we need, they are the regulators, they are the executors, and they are the policy makers. We need to take it all the way down the way he has said that from the local government all the way down from the state to from federal to state, state to local, so that we don't just begin to do things the way everybody's doing his own thing, just because we have the conscience that says that some things are concurrently, some responsibilities. I say, I'll give you a simple example. Until recently, we heard that um, National State or estates in the mid in the middle belt or so that the judges were giving time to go and seek for some form of qualifications, and people were beginning to ask. How were they employed in the first place? How have they been administering justice? A lot has gone wrong. Politics is over. And um, I would like to use the opportunity that, um, with the experience of um, um, President Tinibu, that we need to run the country. And in running the country, it must be devoid of partisanship. We're mm. in trouble. Yes, we're in trouble. 
that, for instance, when people are talking about the subsidy re uh, removal on PMS, I'm saying it's not about your emotions. It's a case of it didn't day. You mm. don't have it, you don't have mm. one hundred million dollars a month. Where are you going to get it? If you had four hundred million dollars, airlines like uh, Emirates will have been able to repatriate their earnings from what they are legitimately sold to Nigerians services here. So to change what would be different by this administration is the ability to create a massive collaboration between the center and the local government and ensure strict regulation and enforcement that their leakages are blocked, that clear policies are saying, yes, I will not tell you what to do, mm. but you will not run a mediocre educational system. You will not run a mediocre health system. If the schools are mediocre, National University Commission and other regulatory bodies will come in and shut they don't even start and shut them down. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give some pointers so I don't take all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's when we begin to hold people, systems, processes accountable and make them accountable and efficient for the people to, to enjoy. Yeah. Mm. Let me come back to you, Dawson. You talked about um, local governments. Um, we've known um, over time that local governments have become an appendage of sorts for state governors. Um, and then I can't remember the last time that local government elections really held as at Wendu. Um, in fact, I must say, for Cross River State, I think that this is um, their tenure has just elapsed. But then, of course, governors have come up with the brilliant idea, which I think it's crazy, um, to come up with these caretaker committees, which is very unconstitutional. So again, how easy is, is it going to be to break away from this norm that has been built over the years. I think it started happening under the Obasanjo regime and has become a norm up until today. If we're unable to break these guys away from or not make them some sort of an appendage to state governors, how are we certain that they can actually function at full capacity? Well, it's, it's all about the constitution. It's all about the uh, the mindset. And what gives me confidence is the fact that uh, you mentioned the Obasanjo regime. And I believe it's under that same regime that uh, Ashura Jibola uh, where they were they, they, they were able to come up with the LCDAs. And that really shut the federal government uh, trying to uh, shut down the Lagos State government uh, uh, monthly allocation. And it took them to the Supreme Court till the government of um, uh, Yaradwa was able to pay. Meaning that Ashura Juna has that first hand uh, opportunity of critically injecting his idea of grassroots governance. And for you to talk about grassroots governance, you must show statutory regulatory standard to re review the constitution, meaning the LCDAs must first be enlarged to real local government. However, we know that the problem is not just the fact that there are no um, um, electoral commission in those states to conduct local government election, But it's all about the lackadaisical attitude, the lack of focus of some of our governors who believe that power uh, at all costs and uh, 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 absolutism of power, meaning power corrupt and absolute power corrupt, absolutely, <coughs> whereby they fail in their various line of thought to organize local government election. Even the one of the most popular presidential candidate, majority of them, Nobody is insulated. We know there are some states that conduct half hazard local government election. You already know who's going to win the local government chairmanship election. We don't need that. We need full independent uh, um, um, process that critically, as the governor's tenures are guaranteed by constitution, such is the way the local government election must be guaranteed. And the best way we can have it done is to remove LASIEC totally. Let the INE conduct local government election the way they are conducting for the governor and the president. But but, so that, but, but then but then the local but the local government electoral commissions are also somewhat constitutional, no, whether you like it or no, not. No, no, we are trying to put about the re-engineering. This is what is called reviewed system. That is why we are calling for a, a restructured system. These are critical areas that we are failing on because the system is yoked with a lot of um, uh, 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 grip to power. And everybody wants to hold everybody to his appendage. And if we continue this way, uh, we are not ready. Just as the way we're able to break the yoke 
of the subsidy by everybody focusing on the real issue, then that is the same way we must break governance. We must be more involved. If by virtue of every citizen getting involved with local government election at that level, the way we got more involved in the 2023 election, we will not be having primary six dropout as our chairman. We will not be having all this kind of, uh, you know, they've all just turned the local government system as a redundant uh, structure of governance. No. In, in developed countries, local government are the base of where security issues are dealt with, where economic issues are properly harmonized, where issues of infrastructure development are properly, critically... Uh, uh, Dotson, I think we, we um, have a little network connection there with you, but I'm going to come back to you. I'm going uh, to come um, enshrine statutory um, bylaws or um, okay. the rates. We need them to be, and that's why I'm advising the president that it should take along immediately the local government chairman as his uh, 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 um, strong food soldiers, because okay. they will be very glad. For the first time, they are, they are recognized by the president. Okay. No president has sat with our local government chairman in discussing issue of national development. Okay. So if he brings it down to their level, empower them, give them all the uh, 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 motivation that they will require to live up to the expectation, they should be the one to, to, to really subsidize the, the, the hardship of the people at the grassroots in collaboration okay. with the governors. Okay. Um Eugene, many have said that, oh, with um, Anasiwaju as president now, uh, for one who has been known since the days of Nadeko, et cetera, et cetera, that he might be the chosen one to bring about true federalism. Thank God uh, for the Buhari administration. And the one very important thing that he did, which you had mentioned, or I think Dr. mentioned, of um, bringing the uh, electricity to, into the... Um, um, concurrent list. Uh, that's obviously a start, but then there are several other things that need to also be um, reviewed, just like Dr. Um said. Um, can I see what you bring true federalism, or can we experience or begin to at least see a little bit of that? Because we say that we are uh, operating a federal system of government, but indeed it is a unitary system of government. Again, Dr. said something about, <laughs> you know, um, making these local government chairmen his foot soldiers, does that not, is, does that not single a, uh, signal a start of a war, a cold war, between governors and the power at the center? Yeah, um, first of all, I support the call for true federalism and independence of the three arms of government, or the three tiers of government. And uh, But while you're doing that, you know you need to go through the uh, parliamentary hurdles that you now face the House of Assemblies you're going to get challenges there because the governors want to keep control. I don't care who you bring as the local government chairman. I don't want any more local governments. With, as president, the most powerful president in the world, Nigerian president, with 774 local governments, I get my NFIU, National Financial uh, Intelligence Unit, my EFCC, my ICPC, my code of conduct, with this and the uh, fraud wing of the Nigerian police, with these four agencies, I follow the money, follow your budget. There are statutory things which I expect to see. If I don't see them, even though some of them might be on some of them might be on the on the various exclusivity or concurrent list, whatever, there are the things within the framework of governance which you will be accountable between the law. I will follow the money and ensure the money is spent and is spent properly. I, I will not tell you what to do, but once the money does not go where it's supposed to go, to, which you have claimed for it to go to, you the necessary things will be done, the necessary sanctions to be attained. If I have to set up special courts, I'll set them. If I have to sanction judges, I'll sanction them. If I have to sanction graft, um, officials of graft agencies for throwing cases, I'll sanction them. Why, how can you sanction them? When, if you lose a case, we review that case. Why did you lose it? What was the nature of the quality of evidence that you brought? What, you know, there are several things. These are the funds. It's not the size of government or the number of people. It's for us, for people to begin to know that it is not business as usual. Mm. So I don't care what you're thinking as a governor, but I will follow the money. And mm. the money will get to the people. So you will need to write something. You will need to show something for you to expend that money. And you, and frivolous projects, 
you, you just embarrass yourself mm. and I'll keep you busy. Yeah. So I, I, once the place becomes, because these same people who are looking to you as difficult to run are the same people who are used to mobilize during partisan politics. Now, if I take you back to the SDP and NRC times, the, it was free. So, for instance, in River State, the governor was an NRC man. The, the Port Harcourt local government chairman was a NRC, uh, was a SDP person. So there was this competition for projects and ensuring that um, teachers' salaries were paid, drainages were done, roads were done, and so mm -hmm. some, all those are the area were done. There was this competition, and it was interesting to see. I think the local government chairman's name was uh, Dr. Chukwu, so he lives in Elekoya, while the governor was at the judge. So we've seen that it's possible. People are earning salaries to do their job, and these civil servants have not done their job. Mm -hmm. Or they are not doing their job because people have not been sanctioned. We, need, we don't need to grow the bureaucracy. All we need to do is begin to make them to be functional. So you earn your keep. You earn your jersey. So that and you do those things which you are supposed to do. The code of conduct bureau does not need much. There are oaths which you sign when you have been elected, after you have been elected or sworn in. If you violate them, there's enough on the federal plate when platter when it comes to regulation and sanction mm. to, to ensure that you do the right thing. And it is time for this. If we don't do it, we're going to sink as a nation. Mm. It is not time for uh, finger pointing. This is supposed to be a new beginning. If President Tinubu wants to have a, in a, a sweet and smooth run, he will need to do what he needs to do. And this applies to the economy, applies to borrowing, applies to security, applies to staffing, applies to every facet of our society. There's enough personnel and enough consequences for people to be dealt with. And we're not coming to punish people, but we're just telling people, Let's look at how things were done in the past. Standards were set in the past. Mm. And let's try to surpass them. Okay, Dr. Um, let, let's talk about something that I think we gloss over a lot in this part. Um, the fact that every single thing that goes wrong, or when we're querying uh, governance, we always look at government at the center. Um, I mean, I could ask all kinds of questions. Um, we always forget about the fact that our governors are the ones that are responsible most to us, yes, we're not in any way absolving the federal government of their duties, but half the time we're always saying, oh, the box stops at Mr. President's table, which is also true. But why is it that we most of the time overlook the duties of our governors to us? Now, we've obviously addressed the issue of local governments because those are, these are the people who are closest to us in terms of governance. They, they reach us where we are. But for governors, they, they, a lot of things seem to fly under the radar. Uh, why do you think that is? And every single time, we're always blaming the president. Yes, he does have his blames, but why do we always you know, overlook the governors? You know, you know, you won't blame us, uh, our people, for casting and carrying all their burdens to the decks of the president, because uh, this is the most uh, we run the most powerful constitution. We have the most powerful president because this is like the president that does no wrong in this part of this country. And at that same position, why our problems are mainly from the head, the way our problem in this country is from the top to the bottom. It's supposed to start from the bottom to the top. But because of the kind of people that we've had at the ends of our fears, they have mostly disappointed us as citizens. They've left critical structure of governance and then they mesh themselves in corrupt activities and reach themselves with, with, with state resources. They still did, a lot of them are still running on state resources. So in as much as people see them as a pointer, as a yardstick to measure governance, that needless not to say that the, 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 the partners that carry these equal burdens are the governors. The majority of these governors mostly um, see themselves in that same position, using the, the, the they even use the, the the camouflage coverage of the of the federal government as their own shield to enrich themselves, mm. whereby citizens don't pay attention to how our budget are being run. Nobody is monitoring the governors. It's supposed to be watch my back. 
the federal government ought to be monitoring the governors. The governors ought to be monitoring the local government. But in this part of the world, you see a local government chairman wanting to ride on a convoy. Why? Because nobody is even checkmating how they manage the resources of the state. Mm -hmm. it, the only thing that will make us get it right is the law. As I've reiterated earlier, that until we review and ensure that we, we totally pull down this present constitution, because it's a constitution that is predicated on military decree. And I don't expect, within the focal point of Ashwajibola Akhmer Tunubu and the 10th Assembly that is coming on board, and the entire tiers of government that we have should still be looking at this whole wagon called constitution to still run us a good governance. No. I, I guess I guess that I guess that that's a conversation for another day, uh, Doctor. No, 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 no. No, I'm it's a conversation for another day because uh, no, I have many no, questions. I have many yes, questions okay. as to Thank how you. soon that can be done. We've had so many constitutional conferences. Let's not even go there. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to have this conversation, but I want to say <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, it's just, to, a, to it's you. just part of our solutions, if you yes. forget it right. Yes. Our law must be set down, and rule of law must have its place in our governance. Well, I want to say thank you uh, to Dotun Hassan, who is a legal practitioner, and to Eugene Abels, who is the executive director, the Extra Step Initiative. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing the position of the Southwest Senators on their choice of leadership for the Senate in the 10th National Assembly. Stay with us. <laughs>